Multiplying terms. Part of the algebra series. Today's menu. Multiplying terms with different letters. Powers and multiplying. Mixed signs. Let's start off with a simple one. 3x times 2y. To do these kind of questions, it's probably easiest to multiply the numbers first, so we get 3 times 2, and then multiply the, num the letters afterwards, so you get x times y. Well, 3 2 is a 6, and x times y in algebra is very easy. You just put the letters next to each other, so the answer is 6xy. Multiply the numbers, and then multiply the letters. When you're multiplying the same letter with another term containing that letter, you get into powers. So you may recall the idea of powers. x times x is x squared. That is the definition of x squared, or x to the power 2. Notice that the power is a superscript, and it's written after the letter. That's so it doesn't get mixed up with the number in front of the letter. A more complicated example, x cubed times x is x to the power 4. In fact, that x symbol is really x to the power 1. And 3 plus 1 makes 4. You may remember that you can multiply numbers of the same power by adding the indexes, or adding the powers. So this one is quite straightforward to do. x cubed times x to the power 5 is equal to x to the power 8. 3 plus 5 equals 8. You can easily convince yourself that's true by just multiplying out x cubed as x times x times x, then multiplying out x to the power 5 as x times x times x times x times x and putting them together. Here's a more complex example. We've got p times q squared times r times p cubed. Now the p, there are two p terms, so the powers become relevant to them, but the q squared r is easy to deal with. We just write them next to each other to multiply them. So putting that together, we end up with p times p cubed is p to the power 4. Then q squared just occurs next, and then times r at the end. You'll notice the textbooks tend to put the answers with the letters in alphabetical order. It's just one of those silly conventions that's grown up. If you get your letters in a different order but the same powers, it doesn't really matter. Because let's face it, 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 3 is 12. Putting this together now, numbers and letters with the same letter involved. Apply the rule, separate the numbers. So then we've got 3 times 2 times 5 times x times x times y. 3 times 2 times 5 is 30. x times x is x squared. And then there's just the times y on the end. Finally, just write all the symbols together without the multiply signs. It doesn't matter if you've got 30yx squared, but remember that 30y squared x would be wrong, because it's the x that's squared. Moving on, we have negative and positive terms, so you need to remember your directed numbers. A minus times a plus is a minus, and a minus times a minus is a plus. Suppose we had something like this, minus 4p times plus 2y, notice how the plus isn't written explicitly, times minus 5q. To do this, we do our standard trick of separating the numbers and the letters. I tend to see the signs as stuck onto the numbers. That way, you know, you can keep track of them. You've got minus 4 times 2, well, that's minus 8. Just hold that minus 8 in your mind. Then you've got minus 8 times minus 5. Minus times a minus is a plus, and 8 fives are 40. So that comes out to be plus 40. Then you've got p times q times y. Well, pqy is easy enough. You just write the symbols together. So at the end of the day, you end up with 40 pqy. Putting it all together, multiply up the numbers. If you're multiplying the same letter, find the power appropriate to that letter. If you're multiplying different letters, just write them together, group them together. Check your signs. Make sure you've done your minus times the plus right, or your plus times the minus right, whatever it is. Your turn. Find any GCSE textbook you like. Turn to the first algebra chapter. Find an exercise on multiplying terms. There will be one. Some books have more practice than others.
If you find there's not enough practice in the GCSE textbook you found, find a numeracy textbook instead. Complete the exercise. Make sure you do enough questions to test all the possible different sign combinations and a variety of numbers. The more different questions you do, the better you'll be able to work out how to do each question. Check the answers in the back of the GCSE textbook. The important point here is if you find you're getting a certain class of problem wrong, you have to go and ask somebody about it or work through one of the worked examples. The next gripping episode will be dividing algebraic fractions, so we have to revise some of our cancelling down that we did in fractions when we did number. That's it.